Say goodbye to hours of paper prototyping. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Fusion 360 to create complete leatherworking patterns that you can try before you ever make them. All right. Today, we're going to try something a little bit different, and I'm going to try and show you how to make a pocket pattern that might be coming out of a purse or a bag. We're just going to concentrate on this one feature of your possible element. It's going to have a panel in the back, a stitch line in between, and a folded pocket with a plate in the front, and a little flap that comes over the top. And we'll see if we can pull this off pretty cleanly. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is move into my sheet metal environment here. I've created a new component. And I'm going to go ahead and start a sketch. So I want you to think of each component as each individual piece of leather that you're actually using to create this shape. And so this one, I'm going to make eight, tab, ten. And this is just like the face of a bag or something like that. I'm going to use a rectangle center point. And I'm going to put that right in the middle of this surface. I'm going to make it about 6 tab 4. There we go. Your size isn't important. Finish that sketch. Create flange. And it's going to make that thickness based on what you set in your sheet metal rules. All right, so from there, I'm going to start creating my pocket. So I'm going to need to come back up to my main assembly, create a new component. I'm going to grab my leather that I already set up, my sheet metal rules, and create a sketch right on that previous piece. I'm going to project that piece up to my present sketch. And you know what? I think that's actually all I, have, all I have to do there. I can create a flange right now right off of that piece. And there we go. I'm going to right click on that component. That is the, you know, I'm going to call that like the front of the piece right here, and we can kind of model off of that. So right click, move, bring it forward about how far I want my pocket to stick out, and all right, now I got two components. Let's come up here, start creating the rest of the shape. So now I think I'm going to turn back on that sketch from the very beginning. Or, you know what, I want to make this simple for you. Let's just create a whole new sketch for each component. Go ahead and say Capture Position. That just means you moved some stuff around. And I'm going to draw I'm going to bring that forward until it matches up. You know, I like to leave myself a little space. This is leather after all. I want that to come back through. I'm going to double click here and change that to a two sided operation. Pull that just out behind that piece as well. 
There we go. Now we've got the beginning of our bottom and everything. Let's go ahead and create some flanges so that we can sew it on easily. Yeah, I don't want to uh, miter that. Yeah, we'll have that come out. Yeah, that's probably good. All right, and let's do some flanges on the front so we can sew it on. There we go, spot to sew it on. I'm just going to make sure that, that that one should be inside. Bend position, inside. There we go. That's already starting to look like a pocket. So, a quick recap. We started with a shape that we wanted to insert our pocket into and we created a little face just right off the same profile and a little extrusion off that same profile as well. Now let's create some stitch holes. I'm going to shut off the visibility for I do believe it is this sketch. <laughs> just so it's not there. And here in the main body I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch right on this surface. I'm going to project the geometry up just so that I've got something to work with there. And I think I'm going to shut off the visibility for my component there. Alright, so now I can create a stitch hole and a stitch line for it to go along. Now sometimes you can go as easy as clicking offset, unselecting chain selection, and selecting the lines that you'd like to create your offset stitch line on. Like that at 0.125 and I think that's good for now. I know I'm actually going to sew a little piece on the back, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit further on this side and create my pattern there. Just a little round over the edge there. I think I'll do that on all of them. Enter to finish that. Now let's create a hole. I'm going to dimension that hole to 0 0.05 for a stitch hole. And I'm going to move it my 0.125 from my seam line. Of course that's up to you. You know what? Actually, this is supposed to be on my seam line. Let's just try that again. Better. <laughs> All right, so now we've got this little stitch hole there. We're going to extrude it downward using extrude. You make sure that's set to cut. All right, I'm going to turn that sketch back on that I was just uh, using. If I can find it. 
So maybe. Uh, it does help to label your sketches. I'm just trying to tear through this for you guys so it's not a uh, 20 minute long video. Now we get to create that pattern. Pattern along path. Select the inside of that circle. The path. This time we're going to select that part that we actually drew. I can let's clean this up. Turn back on the visibility for that component. Oh, that doesn't look right. I feel like I need to go over. Let's just go ahead and go back. I'm going to go back to this sketch. And yeah, that line didn't offset like I was picturing. I'm go ahead and delete that circle. And move that out another. One, two, five. You know, the way that looks. Yeah, that should be fun. Now let's try and create that circle again. I just want to make sure the stitch lines up nice. There's the stitch hole. Go back to the extrusion I made and just reselect the new hole. And now let's try and create that pattern one more time. Everything takes patience. If this was easy, everybody would do it. Now this is just the same as I showed in my stitch tutorial. If you haven't watched that, I'll probably have a link in the description. I'm just guessing how many stitches I need to put on here now. Yeah, it looks like a lot more than 20. Now once you get close, you can start clicking and narrowing it down. And here I know I need it to go up to there. And that's a little too far. So here's why I have my choice whether I want to make the stitches closer together or further apart. I think in this case I'm actually going to make them just a little bit further apart. There you go, I'm just guessing testing, lining that up, and that is within two thousandths of an inch of our pattern uh, lining up there. Give your computer a minute to process, especially if you're working on an old rig. There we go, I'm going to show back off my sketches. Now we've got a stitch pattern around bag. Let's go ahead and create that one last flange on the top that I was showing in the first image. That's going to be right off of here. Let me bring that over. And I'm going to grab another one and bring that down. And I think I'm going to cut that away, make it look a little bit cooler. Snap a line in the middle to start with. 
play with spline a little bit. Mirror that across the middle. <laughs> Mirror that across the middle. There we go. Finish that sketch. Go ahead and cut those chunks away. All right. Oh, yeah. So I cut back too far. I'm going to go back a few uh, steps here. And I'm going to create this one on the outside. There we go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now I can cut that away. And back to our main design. Alright, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be notified for my future posts. And thanks everybody for making me hit past my 100 subscriber mark on my YouTube channel. So I thought I'd do this little special just for you guys. Uh, stay tuned for a beginner's tutorial on how to do some leather working on Fusion 360. And as always, stay creative. Bye.